Thanks for staying. Welcome back to the program. Now, prices of some petroleum products are expected to increase marginally at the pumps in the coming days. This has become has been influenced by the bi-weekly review in prices by companies which import and market the products in the country. But looking at the significant increase in prices since the beginning of this year, could this trigger an increase in transport fares? George Raffi has more. Checks with firms that import and market the product shows that diesel is expected to go up per just 1% per litre in the coming days. Hospital is expected to increase by a similar margin. However, LPG would increase by over 1% per kilo over the current price on the market. So, if the over 90 oil marketing companies decide to go with this projection by the importers, then a gallon of petrol can be sold to you at 18 Ghana cities, 45 pesos, while the gallon of diesel could be sold at 18 Ghana cities, 51 pesos. However, with the current deregulation policy, it is likely that there might not be any increase at all. But some industry watchers hold a different view. Now, this is because from January to date, price of petroleum products have gone up by over 15 percent. But with the current convention where operators are allowed to review prices when there is over 5 percent adjustment in the two reviews, then it's likely that transport operators might review their prices if they get the necessary blessings from the regulator. All right, so on this same development, let's get onto the phone lines and speak with the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers on the current pricing window. Duncan Amwa is Executive Secretary. Good evening and welcome, sir. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening to your third viewers. All right, now our investigations tell us that a 1% increase could be added to the prices of petrol. Do you share the same opinion? Uh, we distance from any such attempt whatsoever. Uh, from the little interaction with industry, a little interaction with a section of the OMCs, yes, we do understand that uh, there's been some overrun of uh, about two pesos uh, on pricing, but most of them have indicated uh, they will be willing, uh, in, in, in the interest of the Ghanaians, uh, to maintain prices uh, so as uh, not to overburden the consumer any further. So what we naturally expecting from uh, a large majority of the OMCs uh, is some stable uh, petroleum pricing uh, for the second window in February. But unfortunately, as uh, you indicated, uh, some would actually want more. And that is where uh, we'll continue to caution uh, the public to be price sensitive and uh, uh, use those stations uh, as well and others. Uh, that will continue to keep faith with all of us. Poor prices are already high enough. And we do not think uh, they need to go up any further uh, right. from current levels of 53 to 56 dollars, uh, as we see on the international market. We think uh, prices ought to be maintained, and most have maintained their prices, and that is welcome. All right. So you said determinants of the world markets are good. Now, what are the the key determinants, and and how uh, much are they going for? Uh, what you have is where the the international uh, the import. Uh, price uh, for the product uh, seem not to have uh, uh, jumped too much. Uh, size is spread between the six region for almost uh, two or three months now. And so uh, you cannot say that World Market Index uh, has failed Ghanaian. The other index that has failed all of us uh, happens to be the, the conversion uh, 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 difference uh, when you exchange or you put the city to the dollar. But even for that, let me be quick to add that because poor prices are not uh, spot pricing, uh, most of what we are even consuming today were actually products that were imported uh, uh, some two or three months ago. So uh, the city has an effect, but others who are able to get the forex uh, every day, every now and then, do not wait uh, for the 90-day credit as they usually have uh, uh, with their uh, uh, suppliers to uh, go back to the, the market and get the dollar. So some are able to manage the forex losses and are able to keep prices uh, down for all of us. And that is why uh, we will continue to uh, caution the public uh, to be price sensitive as well, so that those who decide uh, they need to make a little more, uh, we can all express our frustration at the, the recurring uh, 
uh, increases in poor prices in the country. It is still way too high. Uh, All right. Demand. Now, Duncan, as we speak now, some stakeholders of the transport industry are meeting with the transport minister ostensibly to come out with uh, new law repairs. Do you foresee any upward adjustments and by how much, according to your calculations? Uh, Emmanuel, we would again pass the GPR to you on the back. Uh, this had, I mean, a lot of uh, goodwill for all of us over the past four or five months. If you recall, uh, fuel prices have gone up by not less than five Ghana cities uh, over the period to today, uh, sell at over 19 Ghana cities. This kept pace with all of us. It is uh, mm. a phenomenon that we would have wished uh, never came, never uh, materialized. But unfortunately, where we have gotten to, we all know uh, that transport fares will go up anytime soon. Uh, some two, three weeks ago, social media was awash with news of 15% uh, transport fare increases. Uh, Emmanuel, it could be more, it could be a little less. But All right, Duncan. Uh, we, know, yes. we know for certain that there will be an adjustment uh, upwards as far as transport okay. fare is concerned. And no. that would naturally uh, lead all of us to uh, a higher cost of living in the country. All right, now, we finally, before you go, finally, before you go, do you have any expectations um, from the budget, from the finance minister, to cushion the impact of, um, of, of consumers on petrol price increases? Emma, we have three things we are expecting from the finance ministry. Uh, one of them, uh, whether to redefine the special petroleum tax uh, or reposition the special petroleum tax uh, to whether uh, it will review and reduce the SPT from the 17.5% downwards, or it would fix the SPT at a specific amount instead of the, the, the variable uh, tax that it is uh, left to be. And then again, uh, we would also be praying uh, that some other tax variables uh, on fuel pricing uh, will be reviewed downwards. In the absence of any of those, uh, we can assure you that uh, the government will have a very difficult time from all of us in the country. Fuel mm. prices are just unbearable. We mm. need a review of, of fuel pricing immediately. All right. Thank you very much, Duncan Amwa. Duncan Amwa is the Executive Secretary of the Chamber of uh, Petroleum Consumers, Ghana. Away from that, Finance Minister Ken Ofuriata has debunked claims by Senior Minister Yao Safumafo that the Heritage Fund could be used to finance government's flagship free senior high school policy. There's been a huge public outcry over former finance minister's position with some civil society organizations calling on government to reconsider its position on the fund. But the finance minister, in an interview with Joy Business, said the senior minister couldn't have been right because the Heritage Fund is not part of options being considered by government in funding the policy. As far as I know, he alluded at looking at all the options for us to be able to finance education. Is the Heritage Fund part of the options? I'm not sure we are considering that. I think we have enough resources from our envelope to be able to do it without touching the Heritage Fund. I don't expect us to. So you are saying that we will not touch the Heritage Fund as far as I do not, funding of the free senior higher education is concerned? We will not touch the Heritage Fund for the senior high school program that the president has right now. Meanwhile, as the finance minister prepares to read the first budget in March, key industry players continue to express their expectations. Government has persistently resolved to create an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive. But business associations, including the Chamber of Commerce and the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, uh, despite the, their optimism, yet to see how these promises will be fulfilled in the 2017 budget. Charles IT has more in this report. One major thing the Association of Ghana Industries wants the budget to address is the high cost of doing business in Ghana. Seth Chuma Kwabwa is confident the reduction in corporate taxes and interest rates will go a long way to make the private sector far more competitive. We want to see indications that will give us confidence that we're going to have serious macroeconomic stability. That is key. Without uh, macroeconomic stability, you cannot plan anything, you cannot predict anything, you cannot expand, you cannot invest. So macroeconomic stability is key. And the budget, when it's read, you could have clear indications as to whether you're going to have a stable economy or not. Uh, and that, that also means that certain key indicators, like the inflationary rate, interest rates, 
uh, exchange rate and all that. What are we uh, projecting in the course of the year? So we'd like to see some semblance of uh, all these in, in, in macroeconomic terms. In addition, um, I think that government has also made some commitments uh, through its policies and, and manifesto on the taxes. Uh, there have been a lot of discussions uh, which AGI have also tabled, and we believe that some of the taxes will be reviewed so that um, we will have you know, uh, support for industry. The Chamber of Commerce shares similar concerns as that of the AGIs. President of the Chamber, Nana Apiaje Dankawusu I, says the Chamber is hopeful government will address the promise of constructing its one district, one factory policy. We expect that interest rates will, will come down. And so when interest rate comes down, nobody or less people will put their monies in the treasury bills. And so there will be more other people, you know, placing their monies in businesses and you know increase our exports and the multiplier effect will be quite enormous we are also expecting that the power and energy will be improved with that there will be more you know people engaging in their businesses without any interruption Ghana's economy, which marginally grew by 4% in 2016, was challenged with grave economic challenges coupled with the erratic supply of electricity. Meanwhile, the AGI has cautioned against persistent speculations over the performance of the city. Some businesses and analysts continue to express worry about the recent trend of the city. It depreciated against the dollar by 2.8% as at the end of January. But CEO of the AGI, Seth Chumakwabwa, tells Joy of Business there's no cause for worry. According to him, the performance of the city could worsen in 2017 amid speculations and panic buying. Worry too much because it's actually a cycle. We need to quickly move in to make sure that it doesn't drag too long. And, and a key part of sometimes the city depreciation is the speculation. I don't think that at this stage we should, we should speculate. There's no point in speculating that it's going to depreciate. So let me, even if I have CDs, let me go and mobilize some dollars and keep it so that if the city depreciates further, I don't lose. I don't think we should get into that panic mood at this stage um, it, because it's a normal cycle. Uh, but of course, what we expect to see is measures to make sure that it's contained within reasonable limits, and then we'll live with it. Now, budding entrepreneurs with startup businesses will soon have a new opportunity to access funding from a $1 million package put together by the British Council and its partners. The partners have initiated processes towards establishing a fund to support the growth of small-scale businesses in the country. The package, according to the British Council, forms part of its initiative to boost the capacity of entrepreneurs to the benefit of the economy. Speaking at the launch of a Mading Enterprise Africa Summit here in Accra, Partnership and Business Development Consultant Sydney Tete Hushi charged startups to reposition to take advantage of the initiative. Our mandate is primarily to create opportunities for people and connect people everywhere. And one way we're connecting people in Ghana and the Sub-Saharan Africa region is really around creating sustainable livelihoods for people and creating opportunities for people to create jobs so they can prosper. And so we've been leading programs around providing skills for young people and providing opportunities for enterprise growth and creating a platform for people to speak to each other. And one of such platforms is the Enterprise Africa Summit, which we're holding. It's a Sub-Saharan African Summit, bringing together people from 23 countries. We're looking about 300 people to come and dialogue around how we can innovate, how we can grow enterprise and promote trade and investment amongst Africans and also with the UK. Chief executive of one of our sponsors, NBC Africa, Tenemba Anna Samake, tells Joy Business the company is ready to provide world-class training to interested startups to enable them to take advantage of the opportunities in the economy. We're putting two things on the table. Of course, we will have, um, we'll put some small money in supporting, in uh, making this event happen. Uh, and at the same time, we will be organizing two days investors uh, uh, conference in the conference. We will be organizing a pitch competition 
um, for different agribusinesses from different hubs around Africa, hopefully, not only Ghana. And we will showcase them uh, to investors, but real investors, ready to put money on the table. So this small money, how much are we talking about? No, let's not talk about money. The Maiden Enterprise Africa Summit, slated for the 22nd to the 24th of March this year, is organized by the British Council here in Accra. That report was by Kuku Aban. Now, the German Cooperation for Development, GIZ, in collaboration with the National Development Planning Commission, NDPC, and the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, has launched the Obasima Seal Project in Accra. The seal, which aims at making consumable Ghanaian-made products competitive on the international market, is expected to enable locally manufactured goods meet the right health standards of consumers. Once again, Charles IT. The Abasima Seal was developed in cooperation with the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, and the Ghana Standards Authority to promote healthy eating habits among Ghanaian women. The launch saw stakeholders comment on some ways by which locally made foods could meet global standards. Speaking at the launch, representative of the German ambassador to Ghana, Verena Weiser, stated that Ghana's economy can be made resilient if government invests in the health of its female population. The program is very dear to me and to German Development Corporation because it addresses two of our main topics, that is Ghana's youth and Ghana's private sector, and the need to let both live up to their full potential. For children to live up to their full potential, nutrition of their mothers during pregnancy and in their own nutrition during their first years is essential. So far, several local companies are involved in the program, and I'm very, very glad to hear that they are already in direct contact for the Obasima seal. Under the umbrella of the Obasima seal, all products are marked as quality fortified foods, rich in essential vitamins and minerals for women of reproductive age. Chief Executive of the AGI, Seth Chuma Kwabwa, said three Ghanaian companies who have applied for the sale are currently going through an assessment to determine their qualification. We are dedicated to advocating policies that promote growth and development of businesses in Ghana. But not only that, we are also very interested in promoting the competitiveness of products made in Ghana, both in Ghana and abroad. But the competitiveness objective cannot be achieved without having good quality products that meet some basic standards. But the big question is, what standards are we talking about? And by whose measure? How do we convince our numerous customers and consumers that the product in question meet the standards that we are claiming to have. One surest way to meet this requirement or to give this assurance to our customers is a certification program such as the Obasima. Minister for Children, Gender and Social Protection, Otiku Jaba, who was the guest speaker, expressed high hopes, stating the fact that the project will help tackle cases of extreme poverty among Ghanaian households. It is indeed gratifying to know that affordable, nutritious foods for women is seeking to address this situation. I assure you, for my ministries, of my ministry's unflinching support in whatever way possible to make your project successful. So I'm very happy that we are embarking on this initiative. And indeed, this initiative supports our LEAP 1000 program which seeks to address malnutrition and stunting amongst children as well as maternal, to reduce maternal death. And so the ministry is guaranteeing that we will work in partnership together with the Ghana Health Service and all the other agencies and corporations to ensure that this initiative really works. Meanwhile, country director of the German Development Corporation, GIZ, Alan Walsh, says the German government has renegotiated with the Ghanaian government its support towards Ghana's economic development. This, this time, assistance will be on selected government projects as well as the private sector. The European Union, EU, and the United Kingdom, UK, earlier announced their intention to cut direct aid to the country. 
In an interview with Joy Business at the launch of the Obasima Seal in Accra, Alan Wells stated that the GIC will be extending donor support to some prior areas, including agriculture and renewable energy. We are not worried. We are supporting the new government uh, of Ghana, which I can congratulate of the fantastic elections they had. And we are supporting in different uh, sectors. Uh, also with this launch, the cooperation with the private sector, which is uh, a kind of engine of the economy, of the sustainable economy. So uh, we are happy to cooperate with the government, with the new government, and with uh, uh, the private sector on behalf of the German government, which is uh, giving us the budget uh, for this cooperation. Well, we, have, uh, we are working in different sectors, as I just said, in agriculture, uh, in governance, uh, in renewable energies. Um, and these are the sectors which have been negotiated between the two governments where we, where we have to and are implementing the projects. Been the bane of the service industry in Ghana, the basic mode of communication itself remains a setback to the achievement of organizational goals. In an interview on the Executive Lounge, CEO of Hair Center, Gwen Jima Ado, said Ghanaian business entities must listen to the voice of their customers for the better service provision and eventual growth. There's something that I realize about, you know, doing business in Ghana. We don't listen to our customers, you know. They are the most useful tools that you can think of because they are the ones that will give you the feedback. They are the users of the products. They are the ones that are going to tell you if it's great or it's not. But a customer walks in to complain about your product and you get upset. Okay, so if they know that is the trend, how are they going to come back and give you the information that you need? And so most of our products were inspired by customers. For instance, we have this fro curl that was inspired by Lydia Forsen. Lydia Forsen champions, you know, natural hair. Uh, so you catch the full episode of the Executive Lounge uh, on Saturday at 5 p.m. on the Joy News Channel. We're not taking a break for the interview of the day. you are really assessing the person's um, skills, you're assessing the fact that will the person fit into the organization's culture because um, for, for us we believe that you can learn on the job if you have the right education, you have a first degree, you have an HND, you can learn on the job but you need to be able to fit into the culture. If you don't fit into the culture of the organization you don't grow as a person and if you're not growing as a person the organization is not growing. We are looking at the soft skills. Can the person communicate well? Can the person fit into the culture of the organization? Does the person understand, have the basic understanding of what it means to be, for example, an engineer in um, say a construction organization, you, you get it. And so we are looking at the soft skills, we are not really looking at the hard skills because the hard skills will be asked, I mean, how do you do sales? What, what have you done? What have you generated last year? What did you generate? All those questions will be asked by the recruiting manager. But as the business partner, you need to see how best the person will fit into the organization, fit into the team. And so you sit there, you are picking non-verbal communication, the person's body language, because, I mean, everybody comes to an interview prepared. Nobody walks in. If the person walks in unprepared, you easily dismiss the person. But if you have 10 minutes with a person, you're trying to pick other, other things from the person, the non-verbal communication of the person. That will let you understand a bit about the person. You're trying to look at the person's psychological and physiological makeup. 
those are some of the things we look at as HR when we sit on interview panel. So does this necessarily mean that most of our graduates from the various universities lack, you know, they have the hard skills in terms of the theory, but they lack the soft skills. Can you say that? Can we say that? No, we can't say that. You know, um, someone walks in, for instance, yes, we are still recruiting as a new bank, but then you meet... And that will be it for this evening's edition of Business Live. Thank you so much for keeping company with me on the program. And let's meet again next Monday. My name is Imano Apuachi. Have a great weekend.